What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Take It Apart channel. Today is kind of a sad revelation that my poor Taiyaki fish maker is no longer with us. It was starting to give up some evidence that something wasn't right. You can see by the discolored plastics. Very unfortunate. But uh, eventually it started burning things very quickly and now it won't even power on. Let's see. No, no lights. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take it apart. I'll show you probably what's going on with it. I have a feeling that it started burning stuff quicker and quicker because it had a thermal disconnector that was not disconnecting anymore. It's a little heating regulation device. And what it does, it has a bimetallic strip. And as it heats up, it heats up one metal faster than the other. Metals expand and contract at different rates. And in many of these inexpensive devices, there is no real thermostat. There is a bimetallic contactor. And as it heats up at a very particular temperature, it disconnects. As it cools off, they straighten back out. It makes physical contact, allows it to heat back up again. And that is how many, many of these devices regulate their temperature. So we are going to open this guy up, see what's going on. You can see it's got non-stick fish plates in there. And what you do is you mix up some uh, pancake batter. You put some pancake batter in there and then you put fruit or you put something like uh, Nutella. Seems to be a pretty popular one. And then you put a little bit more pancake batter over it and you close it up. And then it, when it lights up, it tells you, hey, come get your fish. Sadly, sadly, this is... Uh, no longer working. My kids are very upset. That's okay, because that gives us fodder for taking apart on a Take It Apart channel. Guys, and this one here looks like it takes number two Phillips all the way around. I'm guessing that these plates probably have a tab in the front. So we're going to take off these plates up here first. And now since it doesn't power up at all, I guarantee that there is a thermal fuse that finally popped. So if that thermal disconnector, which is basically your temperature management, if that fails so that this does not cause a fire, your thermal fuse will open up permanently and now that device is considered defective. But that's okay, we can probably fix it. Let's see, I need a small device to get in there and lift this out. There we go. Perfect. All right, I was correct. There are some little tangs right here that are holding those nonstick plates. So these ones here, it's a good thing anyway. I can clean those. Not a problem at all. Let's go ahead and let's take off the upper one. So there are some different length screws here. It's interesting. They almost look like they're different length. Maybe not. Very inexpensively made device, however, because of the Taiyaki fish craze, these things are not the cheapest things in the world to buy, and they're very rare because they have to be imported from Japan. Right. Here we go. There's the upper plate. Nice. And I can already see some of the electronics going on right here. See that? All right, we'll pull off the lower plate next. These I'll put off the side. They're all going to get clean because this device is almost certainly fixable. Okay, littler screws holding the plate on. There we go. All right, so that is basically holding the top to bottom together. Very interesting. Okay, I figured that the plate was just kind of sitting in there, but it is actually making up the hinge. My kids absolutely love this thing, and everybody's heartbroken now that it is out here because they believe they believe that anything that comes out here will never make it back into the house, and it'll never be the same. But little do they know, electronics can be repaired right what do we have i have a bunch of things going on 
Okay, so this right here is almost certainly going to be my thermal fuse. Okay, let's very carefully take this guy out. Let's see what's under there. Oh no, that's just my indicator lights. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. So these are little fluorescent bulbs. They run on 120 volts. That way there, there's no need for a uh, DC power supply. And this guy right here is going to be my temperature control. And I need to get him off very carefully. Boy, those things are really latched on there, too. Okay. All right. They're going to play tough to get. So what they did is these little uh, spade connectors, they have a retainer, which most people don't use. However, you can tell that these guys definitely did use them. See that? And if you guys didn't know... Spade terminals almost always have this hole right in the middle of the terminal. And that's so that you can poke this guy through it, locks it on. It makes it very difficult to pull off as you see me struggling. So all you gotta do is poke it to pull it off. However, they poked it in there pretty good. Kind of a tough one to get off. So I need need a set of pliers because in order to test this guy I need to take it out of the circuit there we go let's pull this one off as well don't be afraid to take those apart folks there it's already broke come on man it's got that little tang this one is really held on good I can see an extra piece of metal on there Come on, right there. Oh, wow, that guy's on there good. Okay. All right. well, I can replace him. This is a little bit of heat shielding, not very major. And right here is the component in question. Not the thermal fuse, but this is my disconnector. It keeps my temperature in check, right? And let's see, 150 degrees C, 10 amp, 250 volt. This guy is definitely obtainable. Let's see what else we got on here. Of course, there's all these little fasteners. Love them. Bless their hearts. Okay, and then the heating element is kind of molded in around the base there. Oh, there you go. Now you can see it. Wow. It's crazy. Well, while we're at it, let's go ahead and measure my heating element. There we go. So I have one of my leads disconnected. 26.3 ohms looks pretty good. Let's see, none of these wires are arced or anything. Here, I'm going to go ahead and put him back on. Indicate your lights. Okay, and here is my incoming AC. It's underneath this plate. Lovely. That plate was always awkward. I don't know why it's there. Okay, and there we have it. The oily mess that's underneath there, it's almost impossible to clean. Yuck. All right, so from here we can check my electrical. Ooh, there's a little bit of knot right there. All right, see how this guy right here is being held down? That's sus. Come on. 
go. Okay, this I imagine is going to be my thermal fuse. And there she be. Ta da! And I'm guessing that this guy is completely open. That would make sense for me. Okay. There we have it. It's open. So, I need to get a thermal fuse and. I need to get my temperature monitor or disconnector right here. Set for 150 degrees C. That's a KSD 301 piece of cake. Easy to get. <sighs> Not too bad. Just one here and one on the other side. And I gotta check all these connections as well. Tell you what, let's go ahead and let's ohm out this heating element. 13 ohms. Yes! Heating elements are good. The only thing that was bad is this guy right here, which eventually blew the thermal fuse. So, there you have it, people. This device here originally cost me, I believe, like $60 or $70. I don't have to throw it out. Thank goodness. All it is is probably a little $4 or $5 part. I'm going to get this on order in just a moment. And that way there, I can have this guy back together. It's going to get an extensive cleaning inside. There's oil and stuff everywhere. A lot of that is actually soapy water because I soaked it pretty heavily when I knew I was going to have to make this video and a lot of that crept on the inside. As you can see, there's not very easily a cleaning path for this. you got to take it all apart. And uh, I would say that that's normally a health hazard that uh, you can't get inside a device and clean them. A lot of panini grills and stuff, they have plates like these fish plates. And they just pop off so you can clean underneath them. That's why I like a lot of panini grills. This guy here, it's kind of a sealed unit. They never intend you to service it. Just maybe use it for a year or so and then throw it out, probably. Unfortunately, that's the modern day consumerism. So there you have it, folks. This little guy right here, thermal fuse is only gonna be a dollar or two, and I'm back up and running. Thanks for watching.